Hello and good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you, the good people of the tube. Hope you're today, hope you're feeling grand, and always by your world. Hello there! Welcome, finally, 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 to another episode of How to Play Like the Legendary, the one and only Mr. Jimi Hendrix. Today, we are going to talk about war tricks and techniques, if you will, um, that Jimmy used. Um, I'm planning it not to be a particularly long video, but I always plan my videos not to be very long and end up being like an hour. So uh, I'm going to go through kind of eight points today, which I kind of feel are kind of important again, and get you off on the right foot of um, messing with the warp of the way Jimmy did it. So um, Jimmy... More than anything, would use a Vox Wah Wah, not a Crybaby. Crybabies don't quite, excuse me, Crybabies don't have the right, they don't have the right sweep and they don't have the right gain. Vox pedals, Vox Wah Wah pedals, uh, the silver top Wah Wahs, have more sweep, they've got more expression in them, and they're cleaner sounding. Uh, a Crybaby, I always felt, I, I used a Crybaby for years. But I always felt it added kind of gain to my signal that I didn't want. It was it was and it was not a nice gain either. And also, a crybaby was kind of like all or nothing. Uh, and as soon as I got my Vox Silvertop Wah, the V eight four seven, I think that's what it's called. Um, I was just like, that this is the best wah pedal in the world, and I can see why Jimmy would use the Silvertop Vox over a, a crybaby. Um, just because they, they've got more, they've got more sweep and travel. So I'm going to use my silver top Vox today because it's my favourite wah pedal of all time, and space, uh, because it's just got this oh, volume up, Dave. <laughs> more expression and, and and the sweep is massive on it like from all the way back to all the way forward you know you get a lot of sweep with a with a vox wah pedal in comparison to a crybaby which i say is like you know all bass or all treble okay so um yeah jimmy would always run the vox wah wah well it'd be, it'd be last to me it's kind of uh uh, last to me in the chain. So basically, guitar into a wah pedal. That's where he'd predominantly run it. There are there were odd occasions where he would um, run a fuzz pedal uh, after the wah. So if we go from his guitar to the fuzz pedal to the wah pedal, and then back to either if he had his uni vibe at that time, back to his Marshalls, um, or most most of the time though, it was guitar to the Vox wah wah pedal to a fuzz face to the uni vibe, back to his marshals. Um, that was his signal chain. It wasn't anything complex or anything like that. It was pretty straightforward. Um, and he ran his wah that way most of the time. There are occasions where he runs, like I say, a fuzz pedal in front of that or behind that, or whichever way you see it. Um, but most of the time, it was from the guitar straight into the box. And that's where it was. Um, and that's, you know, and that's that. Um... What else to say? Oh, yes, I need to talk. Uh, I've got eight little points I've laid out, actually, on a bit of paper over there, which I can barely read because it's too far away. And my writing's terrible. But, okay, so let's let's just break this down into eight points, basically. So let's go through them. So, uh, point number one. There's a modification you have to do to your wah pedal to make it behave like Jimmy's. And this is a modification that Jimmy would do to all his wah-wah pedals, bar none. And you can see he's done it on some close-ups, like of the Isle of Wight and the Berkeley gig. Okay, so I know this isn't a wah wah pedal, but my wah wah pedal's uh, velcroed down and I can't get to it. So, it's a very simple modification. It doesn't involve any soldering, it doesn't involve any components changing out or anything like that. This modification that Jimmy would do is dead simple. Basically, under the foot pedal of your wah wah pedal, there's these two little rubber feet on here. Like on this side and on, on the right and the left, there's two little rubber feet. Jimmy would get rid of them. He would cut them off or rip them off. I had to cut mine off as they were glued on dead tight. Uh, and I I actually couldn't just rip them off. So I just cut them off with a, with a little saw I've got for uh, uh, cutting nuts. Um, cutting nuts? Anyway. Um, so yeah, that's the first mod you have to do to any wah wah pedal if you want to kind of do some of these Jimmy things I'm going to talk about today. Because it makes the wah pedal a lot easier to turn off, uh, on and off, sorry. You don't have to put any force into it. So basically, you know, from off 
you know, the min minimum amount of pressure will just turn it on. You know, you just have to tap it. If I if I just turn on distortion on, you can hear. And that in itself is a, a very Jimi Hendrix kind of sound. Okay, so that's the first thing you've got to do to be able to do any of these kind of little techniques I'm going to show you today. You have to remove those rubber feet for the warp pedal to easily turn off and on. And there's also a very interesting thing that all Vox Silvertops wires do, that even the new modern ones that Crybabies don't do, the Ibanez wire doesn't do, all these other wire pedals I've tried don't do, but the Vox does for some reason, I'll get to that in a bit. Um, another thing that was very important about the vo uh, the wah wah pedal for Jimmy, and this is a very small point, but it is a, an, an interesting and important point, is the tone drain that a, a, a non-true bypass wah adds to your tone. Because you got to think, Jimmy was using 100 or 200 watt marshals, not on full tilt, but very kind of loud. And the wah pedal, the fuzz pedal, and the big coily leads all cut down the high end of those amplifiers. It all kind of, it was an all amalgamation of those things, sorry about that, <clears throat> uh, to create Jimmy's tone and, and warm it up. You now, cut off some of the highs. So, um, non true bypass is preferred wah wah wise if you want to get a more authentic Jimmy thing, because Jimmy's pedals weren't true bypass. And you need that wah pedal to drain the high end. You know what I mean? You need that kind of thing. It, it's part of Jimmy's sound, that, 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 that tone suck that a wah pedal gives you. Okay, so first two points, like I said, modification, get rid of those feet. And another one is, you know, you don't, it doesn't have to be Drew Bypass. It's just that, you know, it's better if it is because it gets rid of high end and also makes the wah sound warmer than if it's True Bypass. Uh, I've tried a couple of True Bypass wah pedals and I found them to be way too harsh, especially for that kind of Jimmy thing. They're, they're harsh in a, in a nasty way, not harsh in a kind of good way. Okay, so point three. This is kind of a cool thing that Jimmy would do with a wah pedal. Jimmy would sometimes just leave a wah pedal on all the time. For solos only though, not for rhythm parts, just for solos. So basically, it would just turn it on like a normal pedal. So if, uh, if you're doing a song like, say, Fire, and you're coming up to the guitar solo... Uh, for the guitar side, Jimmy would just leave the wah pedal on full tilt. He would just turn it on and just leave it flat down with the foot pedals flat down. So, um... Oh, 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 oh. stuff like that so it does be on all the time and it makes the guitar the, the, the solo just scream it really jumps out and the same thing goes for uh, Purple Haze uh, the guitar solo for Purple Haze he would do the same thing again so <laughs> turn it off again when he came back into the riff. So that's point, that's that's the third point I want to say today. Don't be afraid to just turn it on and leave it. Don't actually even wah with it, just click it on. And I say with those two feet removed, it makes it very easy to do that. And like, you know, you know, you don't have to put any amount of pressure on the wah pedal to turn it off with those feet removed. It's really, really, really easy just to, you know, to turn it on and off. And, that, and that's, that's really important for a, a technique we'll come to in a bit. So, that's the first three things. Like I say, let's just recap. So, remove those feet, non-true bypass really to warm it up and have a warmer wah sound, and also leave it on full tilt for guitar solos. You know, there are, there are many, many times where, like I say, you just... You know, you, you hear him just with that really shrill, cutting tone. But again, because it's not true bypass, it adds a little bit of warmth to it. It's not as... I mean, it, it, it's listenable. It's not horrific. <laughs> you 
you know what I mean? It, it's shrill, but it's not. I mean, that, that, and that's on bridge pickup, as a bridge single core pickup. It's not horrific. Whereas I always found the crybaby, which is in a box over there, never to come out again unless I need it, um, to just be dead harsh, especially when you left it on full tilt. It was like, ah, my ears! And the same goes for true bypass uh, wire pedals. I found them just to be way too harsh. Okay, so that's point basically three, if you will. Leave it on all the time. Do not be afraid of doing guitar solos with, on full tilt. Uh, slight return, Voodoo Child Slight Return. Um, mm -hmm. That's another example of the wire pedal being on on full tilt all the time. Uh, and even just leaving it, you know, it just it would just turn it on. And also, um, Hear My Train Coming at Berkeley is full tilt wah. Jimmy actually moves away from the wah. If you've seen the footage, uh, it, get, it, it comes to the solo where he's like, Hear My Train Coming, and he just kicks on his fuzz pedal, kicks on his wah, and goes and walks off to the right side of the stage and leaves the wah on. And it's such a warm but cutting sound and he's just left the wire on it it's a, it's a really really cool thing okay so that's point three or you know just leave it on full tilt sometimes for guitar size and make them pop basically okay so uh number four okay now this one's wicked and this one i learned from randy hansen if you don't know who randy hansen is look him up on youtube you'll be skipped I, I, first time i saw randy hansen i was actually physically shaking at how close he is to jimmy he is but he's just jimmy hendrix he's the closest to Jimi Hendrix I've ever heard. He's just just scary. But I learned this from Randy Hansen. And it's the whole thing of Jimmy would turn the wah pedal on for one note and immediately turn it off. And you can hear this in songs like Voodoo Child at Woodstock. You can hear it all over where uh, Jimmy would just turn on the wah and make one note pop out and then turn it off again. So uh, if you think of Voodoo Child after the, uh, the first line... <laughs> That one note, wow! It just makes it stick out more. And he would do it. It's a mainly a live thing that Jimmy would do. It's not really, you don't really hear it much in the studio work, but uh, Jimmy would do it live a lot. Where you get, well, say you get, you just get that one note, and it just sticks out. And again, without those two rubber feet on the front, makes that possible. Without, if you leave those two rubber feet on the front of any wire pedal, it makes that really hard because of the amount of pressure you've got to put on the wire to get it to. Uh, to, to turn on and turn off. So without those feet, it just makes it... You know, it just makes it dead easy to turn off and on, especially for doing... That. You know, really, really cool. Okay, so that's another thing you can do that Jimmy did, and he did it a lot live, but not, not really in the studio, but he did it a lot live, and it's a really cool technique just to make certain notes pop. And you can do it, like, during a solo. Like, if you're just kind of like, you know, just, just like, you know whittling away over something like Voodoo Child. You know, hopefully you can hear there me turning it on for one note and then turning it off. It makes certain... It really emphasizes certain notes and really pushes them out there into the forefront. So, you know, it's like, you know, hey, here we are. And it just has a really cool dynamic to solos. So that's another little trick that Jimmy would do quite a lot, like I say, live. Just to just turn on the wire pedal and leave it on full tilt or just turn it on for one note, make that note pop out and then turn it off again. And like I say, without those rubber feet, it's dead easy to do. With those rubber feet, it's a lot harder. Okay, so uh, that's another thing. Uh, where are we now? I'm going to move this bit of paper closer. It's just ridiculous, Dave. You can't read. You can't re even read my own writing. I wrote these down so I won't forget them as well because I was I was afraid I would start waffling and not actually get to the point and run out of time. So uh, so yeah, we've got um, on for one note. Oh yeah, and for noise making as well. Um, if you listen to the album version of Voodoo Child uh, before solos. Uh, the solo is actually in Voodoo Child, the album version, he doesn't actually play with the wah pedal. The first guitar solo, the, the iconic, you know, the one we all know and love, um, he doesn't actually play that solo with the wah pedal, but before he actually goes into that first note, the, uh, he turns on his wah pedal to create a noise, and he does that just by strumming all open strings, turning it on, and before he hits that note, he turns the wah pedal off. 
So, um, give, give you an idea. It's, kind of, it's like this. So, what I've had a lot. Hopefully, you hit it kind of sound. It's a real back of a throat kind of noise. But then he turns it off again. And it's just for noise making before before solos, basically. You can kind of do it you can kind of do it in any kind of form, but it's really, really cool to do. <laughs> You know, it's just there for noise making, basically. That's all you're using it for, is to make those open strings, again, pop. In the same way you're kind of hitting that single note with the wah pedal on and then turning it off, you know, it really makes it pop out. So um, that's another little thing, basically. It's in the same kind of vein as just using it for one note. You know, you're using it for one thing and it's just that noise. And uh, there's a lot of noise in Jimmy's playing, which is really kind of key to the sound. You know, there's a lot of kind of... Um, a lot of these open strings, kind of a lot of kind of real sustained kind of like things like that, which really add to Jimmy's playing. Um, okay, so yeah, that's another thing. So, so far, we've got uh, removal of those two rubber feet. Uh, Non-true bypass is important, like I say, because it, it warms up the wah. It gives the wah pedal, especially on full tilt, a warmer, rounder, cleaner kind of sound that isn't isn't like, ah, my ears, you know, you know, cut cheese with it. You know, and make cheese sandwiches. But um, I wonder if Jimmy would like cheese sandwiches. Anyway, tangent boys in effect, everybody. Hello, Dave. Anyway, uh, yeah, so we've got uh, removal of feet. got the tone thing with non-true bypass. Just warms up the wire a lot. Uh, leaving it on full tilt all the time uh, for guitar solos. Again, it just makes your guitar solos just pop. And uh, a lot of the time, that kind of gets neglected, you know, just to leave it on. You know, it, it sounds really cool, I think. <laughs> You know, sounds really cool. I love that. So uh, again, yeah, leaving it on for thing. Uh, one note as well. You know, just like popping it on for one note, turning it off again. That's I say that one goes hand in hand with the removal of the feet one because it's dead important to have those feet removed. Because there's just no way. Um, I couldn't do it with this Wawa before I uh, removed the feet. And I couldn't do it with my crybaby. I, well, I can't do it with my crybaby anyway. Because the crybaby just doesn't respond. It just doesn't respond at all. Uh, kind of get away with, with the Ibanez. But um, b b before removal of the feet, I was just impossible. Because the amount of pressure I had to put on the Wawa to make it turn on. And then trying to get it turned off in that split second you've got to get that one note to pop. Is really, really difficult. And I say, you know, another thing as well, point for noise making, just <laughs> you know, just like that. It's really cool. Uh, open strings, all open strings. All those noise making you hear Jimmy do, it's, it's all open strings. Okay, so now, number five. This is where we're going to start getting some fun stuff. Well, it's all fun stuff. It's all great stuff. It, it's amazing how much you can do with a wah pedal. It's amazing how much Jimmy did with a wah pedal. It's terrifying. The man was a genius beyond. He really was. Okay, so... Point number five, dive bomb wah with open uh, with open strings. And what I mean by this is this. Uh, let's, I'm a bit close to the cab, so it's buzzing because I've got quite a lot of gain. But I mean this. Oh. You know, and, and it, you'd find these kind of things before guitar solos. What he would do is kind of like do a dive bomb with the wah pedal engaged, and then go for a solo with like a real big bend. It's really, really cool. Stuff like this. You know, or mid solo if he's like... You know, stuff like that. So basically all you're doing there is I'm hitting open D or open G strings. And you're basically just kind of like increasing the wah and dive bombing at the same time. I wish I, I wish I wasn't kind of using this guitar now because I'm not as comfortable with this as I am another one. So hopefully my demonstration is okay. Uh, I do apologise if it's not. Sorry, Jimmy. Um, I'm not. I can't play guitar very well upside down like you can. But um, okay, so like this. Oh, open G string. <laughs> 
know, it's sort of like that. And Jimmy would do that a lot, like mid solo or just here and there. And you hear it a lot. And the longer you can draw it out, the more intense the bend afterwards is. If you do it really slow. <laughs> You know, it really does a lot. And I say, it's just increasing the wah from the bass position up to the treble. You know, it just adds a really cool thing to a guitar side. And you say you do it mid-solo or to start a solo. I mean, you can do all sorts. Of You know, and it works for all those kind of sustained kind of thing. So open string wah uh, dive bombs are really, really cool. And again, they're just it's just Jimi Hendrix to you know, it's just a, it's such a technique that's his that we're all copying. If you know what I mean, like you know, Jimmy, nobody did it before Jimmy. Nobody did that kind of thing before Jimmy. Jimmy came in, revolutionized how we play guitar, but we're still trying to catch up with today, uh, in my opinion. Um, so they're really, really cool, and I say just to drag them out. And you can kind of do it on all strings. So you get your D, G, B, A. So stuff like that is really, really cool. So I hope that makes, I really hope this is making sense. As again, here comes the fear, everybody, that I'm I'm not making any sense and it's all gone wrong. Um, so yeah, dive bombs and open strings are really a Jimmy thing. I say so many people use them today, but you can stem them back to Jimi Hendrix, especially with the wah-wah, uh, where it comes from. So that's another Jimmy wah technique that he, he used quite a lot, just to kind of get those open strings. You know, it really sounds cool. That was an amazing impression. I think you'll agree. And the number one mouth impression of Jimi Hendrix goes to not Dave Simpson. Anyway, uh, moving along. So yeah, dive bombs and open strings. Give that a whirl on... Uh, if you're in E, if you're in the key of E, like say Voodoo Child, you're doing Voodoo Child. Uh, Sight Return, not Voodoo Child, the blues version. Um, you can use your G string or your D string. Uh, or your A string for that matter as well. Uh, but the G string has more pop and the D string has more pop. In most of the time, Jimmy would use his G or his D string. Most of his G string, because it's just got this real... Yeah, it's just got a bit more... It's got a bit more kind of a pop than the D string. The D string's good, but the G string's better. You know, especially with the wah wah engaged. Okay, so... um. Yes, dive bomb open strings. So yeah, that's, that's another technique. And again, made easier by the feet not being on the, on the wah-wah pillow because you can be mid-solo without the wah and then engage it for that dive bomb and it makes the next part of your solo pop even more. You know, hopefully you get what I mean. No, it's really cool. I could do that all day. I could literally just do that all day. It just sounds mega. Absolutely mega. I love it. Oh, Jimmy. Why are you still, why are you not here anymore? Anyway, moving along. So that's point five. Point six. Oh, I like this one. I'm, yeah, I think, I think you'll, I hope you'll enjoy this one. This is, I'm, I'm going to call this one, uh, basically kind of open string kind of dive bombs. Uh, well, it's, well, it's sliding dive bombs, if you will. It, j you can hear this in songs like Machine Gun and the Star Spangled Banner. And also when Jimmy was just angry. It's a very, very, very angry sounding thing to do on your guitar. So basically what this is, and again, with the feet removed on the wire makes this 10 times easier. I can't, I really, I'm going to keep re stressing that because it really is important to get those feet gone. And it takes a bit of adjusting, by the way, so you don't turn the wire pedal off. You need to feel... Where, it, where the button clicks uh, off and on. You, it, and it, it takes a bit of time to get used to that, but you know, you will eventually get used to it. Um, but these these sliding dive bombs are absolutely terrifying sounding, especially when you're loud, they are terrifying. What I mean by that is this, these are sliding dive bombs. 
That's what I mean by sliding dive bombs. They're just absolutely terrifying. And that was Jimmy simulating bombs dropping. You know, it, it, you know, it, at the time, you know, the Vietnam War was going on. There was a lot of kind of like, you know, upheaval, like, you know, just nastiness going on in America, you know, you know, with, with, with Vietnam and everything. And this is Jimmy's protest noises, basically. You hear him in the Star Spiral Banner. They're there for as, a, as a protest. You know, it, it's it's disgusting. And it... And apparently the Star Spiral Banner meant everything to troops fighting in Vietnam because it just depicted what they live every day. You know, it's, 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 it's so powerful. Even today, those noises that Jimmy makes and when you play them, you can't help but feel how powerful they are. And when you hear them, you can't help but feel how powerful those dive bombs are and those, you know, horrific noises, absolutely horrific noises. And, but they're so, dare I say it, beautiful at the same time, you know, because they really are. I mean, it's you know, absolutely incredible expression, absolutely incredible expression. And again, no one had done this before Jimmy. No one had done these kind of techniques and these effects before Jimmy, which again, we're all playing catch up on still. Okay, so how to do this is dead, it's dead simple, but again, supremely effective and very, very thought provoking and very, very powerful emotionally of what they, what they feel like and what they should feel like when you're playing them. So basically what you're doing, let's go to a cleaner sound, is you're sliding down. It doesn't matter to what any note, it doesn't matter because you're bending the low E string to absolute its limit. So all you're doing is sliding down the low E string to anywhere on the higher register past the 12th fret, preferably past the 15th as well. And just bending it like that. And as you're doing that, you want to be kind of like, you know, you want to be going for your, your tremolo line. So. And as you release that bend, as it's going like that, you want to stamp on your wah pedal and hit all of your open strings or a bend on the high E string. So say like, for instance, like the 17th fret on the high E string, like the, that, that, that full step bend, like that. So sliding down all the way, then bend that string to its, you know, to the limit of what you can bend it to. And as you're releasing it, as you release it to kind of like to a point where it's nearly back in tune, but not quite, stand on your wire pedal and hit a note with your tremolo arm and just dive bomb it. <coughs> Like that. <laughs> or hit open strings. <laughs> and you know, just 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 ride the wah wah basically. So <laughs> or, And again, because you're standing on the wah pedal and turning it on for that note, that single note, that note screams, it just pops right out. And I say when you get tons and tons of gain on it, uh, like Jimmy did when he had his fuzz pedal on, it just adds to harrowing experience it's just like, you know it just is ridiculous expression and it it ex it encapsulates that sound boom horrible absolutely horrific um that's exactly what it is um and that's exactly what that noise is so and this you know like i say it's very hard not to feel very funny about these licks when you play them. They're very, very powerful, very, very strong feeling. Um, but they sound mega and they can add so much drama to either the end of the song or a guitar solo. You know, it, depending on uh, what you're doing, you know, if you feel that way, then you can do that. There are, there, there are times where you, know, you, you could be doing a, a normal guitar solo and somebody at the bar flicks their fingers up at you in the bad way, not that way. Um, you know, and you're just like, you, you what? You what? And all of a sudden you get really angry and you're just like, right. You know, all of a sudden, all your aggression is coming out through the guitar because that's exactly what that noise is. It's anger, it's aggression, 
it's just harrowing and all of a sudden people are just be like whoa what's going on here so that's another jimmy technique and they're the, they're the sliding dive bombs if you will incorporating open strings sliding down on the low e string and then incorporating turning the warp on for a single note and turning it off or you don't have to turn it off for a single note you can like prolong the the explosion if you will uh you can prolong that by just you know, uh, going mad on your tremolo arm, like... <laughs> you know, stuff like that. So, you can just kind of prolong that to however you feel, and it really is down to how you feel. And these techniques are not easy to do, and um, they want, you know, your fingers want to be a bit uh, Bernie by the end of it because you're doing so much sliding and yanking on the strings like I said and you really want to be pulling on the strings do not be afraid of breaking your if your strings break they break you know what I mean because it's all about expression at the end of the day it's it, it's totally fine for, to break a string do not be scared of breaking strings live or at practice or in your bedroom or wherever strings are going to break just approach it like you know just keep going just keep going do not be scared do not be put off do not let it sway your mind keep your mind focused on what you're doing you know what I mean? Don't, uh, well, actually, don't keep your mind focused on what you're doing because your mind will mess you about. Just keep doing what you're doing. Just feel your way through it because you'll you'll be and then you'll be okay. Okay, so that's another Jimmy trick. Okay, so just absolutely horrific dive bomb noises. And again, like we say, we're all, I'm, like I'm, in my opinion, we're all playing catch up on Jimmy because Jimmy was doing this stuff in 1968, 1969, 1970, and you know it's just like yeah, it's just ridiculous when you think about that. Ah, oh, nearly 50 odd years later, we're still trying to catch up to the man. Okay, so, um, so yeah, let's do a recap. Removal of the feet, non-true bypass because it creates a warmer wah-wah sound. Um, leaving the wah pedal on full tilt, just turning it on and leaving it on so the, the solo really screams. It's almost like a, like a treble boost, basically, uh, but a little bit more punchy. Um... Yeah, on for one note, so stuff like Voodoo Child, like, beep, just one note, and also kind of like noise making before solos. So, in, like, you know, for instance, the, the intro to the Voodoo Child first solo, you hear him hit all the open strings, turn his wah pedal on, and when he hits the first note, <laughs> that thing, it, he turns it off again. It's no, it's no longer on. It's just made for that whack noise, and that's it. Um, and then we've got dive bombs with open strings, so stuff like... <laughs> He does make, again, the, using the wah basically to make things pop out uh, and, you know, just accent, accentuate these kind of things. And then we've got point six, which is kind of like sliding open string dive bombs. So basically sliding down the low E, hitting uh, either all of your open strings or bending a really high note on the high E string or B string or whatever you want to do or hitting multiple strings and getting, getting that really aggressive sound. Then that's the combination of the E, B and G string. <laughs> I say combined with a wah, just sounds you know, aggressive as anything. Okay, so um, I was going to retune quickly because I think I dive on something guitar after tune. Yes, it has. That's okay, though. That's okay. Okay, so the next little technique is probably the hardest technique that I'm going to talk about today. And it's really hard because what you've got to do is you've got to turn the wah pedal off. Uh, and on really quickly. You do, you've got to do it in like you know really quick succession. And again, this is the thing that Jimmy would do. You hear it in Voodoo Child. You hear it in the Star Spangled Banner at the end. You hear it all over Jimmy's playing. Well, basically what he's doing is turning a wah pedal off and on super, super fast. Da -da 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 like that. And it creates this kind of weird kind of triplet almost effect. Uh, you hear it in Voodoo Child mostly. Kind of like... <laughs> That, that, wow, 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 that, that thing. I can't do it very well with my right foot. I need to do it with my left. You know, he's doing that. that you, you can hear that, you know, quite predominantly in that. And also at the end of the Star Spanner Banner when he's doing kind of... I can't, I can't remember it. I've gone, I've gone, I've gone, I've gone, I've gone, I've gone the silly. <laughs> You know, there's no 
nowhere near as good as Jimmy could do it because I'm still practicing. I'm still learning how to do it. It's really, really hard technique to do. And especially when you hear Jimmy do it and you hear the control he had over this, it's really, really... It, 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 it blows my mind. Jimmy absolutely destroyed... It, it just blows my mind every time. When I start thinking about the techniques he came up with and then trying to recreate them is really difficult. So basically, what you're doing here, and again... It all comes down to that first point, removal of the feet. Without those, with those feet gone, you can do it. With those feet there, you can't do this. It's an impossible. It's absolutely impossible. They will not let you. So with those feet gone, and the wire pedal dead easy to turn off and on, you can basically ride your foot um, over the top of the switch and just gradually turn the wire pedal off and on really quick. But basically, kind of like trying to get your foot to, foot to almost kind of like spasm, if you will. <laughs> And hopefully you'll be able, to, yeah. Hopefully you'll be able to hear the click of the the, the pedal in the in the audio. Hopefully from the room mics will pick it up. Um, and that and that and that's the key. But it's hard. It's really, 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 really difficult to do. And uh, this is another thing. Crybaby wires don't do this. For some reason, I don't know why. Crybaby wires do not. Uh, the, the Vox Silver Tops spring back at you. So when you turn it on. They, they spring back to a place where you can immediately turn it back. Uh, where, when you turn it on, they immediately spring back to a place where you can turn it off. And then once it springs back from off, you can turn it back on. And I, hope, I don't know if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. Um, but yeah, like, basically, when you press, when you depress the pedal, there's a little bit of a spring back. So they pop back up. So you can immediately turn them back on again or off. You know, so if I'm turning that on, it's sprung back up. I can immediately turn it back on. And I can do it on this Roto Vibe, which is no dissimilar to a Crybaby, but I can't do it on any Crybaby I've ever tried, which is really weird. Um, and also, some Vox Wawa pe pedals won't do it. I had a block, a black Vox. That was a, a Blox. It's kind of like a combination of a black Vox. Uh, <laughs> simplified words with Dave Simpson. Uh, but I had a black top uh, Vox Wawa pedal. And uh, it didn't do it, and also it was it was not very good. Uh, the silver top wires are the best, in in my opinion. But they say they just have this perfect spring back where you can turn them off and on. If I go to a cleaner sound, so it's not noisy, you can kind of hear. So if I just ho hover my foot over the wah wah pedal, um, actually I'll tell you what. Let me angle the camera down and I'll show you. Musical interlude. Where are we? There we are. I think, I hope that's got it. Okay, so, now, uh, if I just, I mean, I, I'm literally just hovering, uh, say hello to my amazing socks, everybody. Oh, on my new look pedal board that I just built, everybody. I hope you, uh, hope you like that. Same pedals, just easier laid out for me. Okay, so what I'm doing, I'm just hovering my foot over the, uh, I'm basically tiptoeing over where the switch is. I have to do it with this foot, actually. Um, and basically just, you know, you just turn it on and then can turn it off again. And I say, it's, it's, the, it's the sudden increase in treble that gives you that kind of wah, 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 kind of sound. Uh, and it works great for bends, like I say, that, that bend in Voodoo Child. You know, that, that, that's what he's doing. So, but this is a really, 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 really hard technique to kind of like, you know, to get. It takes a lot of, um, a lot of messing about, really. It really does take a lot of messing about. And it, it just takes a bit of time to kind of get used to turning a wire pedal off and on that quick. Because it's, it's not like a pedal, which you can kind of turn off and on really easy. Um, there's more to doing it with a wah wah pedal. But again, it's just about basically getting you kind of tip, I find it better to kind of tiptoe on it. So basically the, the ball of my foot isn't in contact with the pedal, it's just the tip of my, my foot. It's basically my toes and uh, the, you know, the, the, the ball part of my, uh, my foot. They're not the back part, they're just the front part. You know, and that, 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 that I feel makes it a lot easier to kind of do. Like I said, this is definitely probably the hardest technique to do. Uh, in these eight points by far. This is definitely the hardest kind of like, you know, little technique to do. 
I would say the open string sliding dive bombs are the hardest technique to do emotionally because you've got to put everything you've got into them. They're definitely harder. But this is the hardest technique to get right. It really is fiddly. It's hard work. It's quite tiring as well to practice it because it wears out your leg because you're on tiptoes. So all the weight goes onto your other leg and it can be quite tiring to do. And also to get it smooth and in time, it can be difficult. Okay, so uh, hopefully you can see what I was doing there. Like I say, it's just a case of kind of like basically just balancing your foot with, your, with your, just your toes and just using the front part of your foot to turn it off and on real quick. Which again, I'm still practicing it. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not in any way near closely, close to close enough to the way Jimmy did it at all. It, it's just, I know how to do it. It's just that I, I can't do it as well as Jimmy. It, it's really, really difficult to do. Okay, so I'm gonna move the camera back up and, uh, and then we'll talk about uh, some of the last things. Okay, uh, sorry about that. We had a bit of a catastrophic book fall. Uh, as I was repositioning the camera, the load of books decided to fall on the camera, which was uh, which was great. That was that was fun. <laughs> anyway, I was hoping to do all this in one take, but now thanks to you, Mr. Book. Anyway, so yeah, um, so yeah, so so far we got like seven points basically on like Jimmy's wah wah use, which is really really kind of like you know it just it's crazy when you think about it like when, when the wah pedal first came out you know people like eric clapton had one you know eric clapton made you know the wah kind of famous really with with uh, with his use of it in cream but then when jimmy Hendrix came along and just took the wah to the next level <sighs> scary very very scary stuff um so yeah um the last thing i want to talk about is just using a wah for riffs uh and and also um like, oh, actually, I, was, I do apologize, actually. I've just missed one. So I won't talk about wire riffs just now. I'm going to talk about open string dive bombs again quickly because I've missed one out and it's just popped in for mine and I'm so glad it did because I could have missed this one out and that would have been horrific. I'm talking about doing this. <laughs> Open string or chord dive bombs, everybody. The most coolest thing in the world. So basically, all you're doing is you're hitting all your open strings, <laughs> turning on the wah, and just going wah, 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 wah with it while dive bombing. <laughs> and it's just one of those stereotypical, I hate to say that word about Jimmy, but it's just one of those sounds that's so linked to Jimmy that you just can't get away from it. It's just Jimmy's sound. <laughs> oh. <laughs> And you can do it with chords as well. And uh, actually, that brings me quite neatly into using wah, the wah pedal for riffs. You know, Jimmy would do that in Burning the Midnight Lamp. You hear it all over it, especially in the live BBC or special sessions. Okay, so, yeah. I mean, there's there's so many riffs that Jimmy did with all the wah pedal that are just distinctive. Burning the Midnight Lamp, the classic. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. Uh, Easy Rider, uh, all sorts. You know, Jimmy used the wah pedal to, to, I think to its exact, it to its extreme. You know, I, I, I don't know. Uh, I remember Rory Gallagher saying um, in an interview, somebody asked Rory why he didn't use a wah pedal. And he said, there's no point using a wah pedal. He says, because Jimi Hendrix did everything you could do with a wah pedal. <laughs> and I was like, he's, he's Bob on. Rory is Bob on there. He said, I don't, you know, what's the point in using a wah pedal when, you know, Jimmy's just done everything with it you can't there's nothing you can really do with a wah pedal that jimmy hasn't already done really because people of the tube can you think of a technique involving a wah pedal that doesn't stem back to jimmy hendrix because i can't think of one right now on the spot people do help me out see if you can name a technique that's not jimmy's you know because there's so many things like, you can always stem something 
back with the use of a wah pedal to Jimmy. Even Tom Morello, if you listen to kind of like, you know, stuff like... <laughs> by Raising the Machine, Balls on Parade. If you go back to stuff like um, Band of Gypsies, Who Knows? If you listen to the guitar solo outro jam of Who Knows, where Jimmy's got his Octavia on, he's got that Tom Morello sound then, you know, you know, way before, technically, Tom Morello's got Jimi Hendrix's sound because Jimmy came first. But, you know what I mean? He's, he's kind of doing... <laughs> Which is no different to... <laughs> ah! I have just thought of a technique that wasn't Jimmy's, and it is Tom Morello's. Uh, it's scratching with a wah pedal. But, um... <laughs> using the guitar as a scratch pad. But, regardless of that, any, can you name any other techniques that can't be stemmed back to Jimi Hendrix's use of the wah-wah pedal? Because Jimi did take the wah pedal pretty much as far as it could go, uh, I personally, oh, in, in my personal opinion. But anyway, um, so yeah, uh, using wahs and riffs, you know, is, an, is another thing that Jimi, I've, I've gone off on a tangent, I have to, to come back. Um, but yeah, using wahs and riffs is, is an, again, it, it, Jimi kind of started that. Because Eric Clapton did use a wah in stuff like White Room. And you can hear, you know, uh, Eric Clapton use a wah, but he, he was he was just using it for wah, you know. It, oh. Yeah, he's using it more of an effect than a, an, a tool for expression. Where, whereas Jimmy came along, he was using it for a lot of expression, where it's kind of. Like... <laughs> You know, and nothing I did there was nothing I, I kind of spoke about. Like there's the open string dive bombs, using it for one note, stuff like that. But Jimmy was using it a lot more expressively. Uh, than, and than Eric was. Eric was just using it more, like I say, an, as an effect, not uh, like where Jimmy was using it as kind of like something to really accentuate and really get some feelings out of him. So, um, so yeah, I mean, um, is there anything else I forgot to talk about? I don't think there is. I think that's it, everybody. I think that's it. I kind of just want to talk quickly about kind of those eight points. So let's just do a recap quick. So first things first, get rid of those rubber feet off the front. Under the tread plate, uh, on the left and the right, you'll see two rubber feet. Get rid of them in any way, shape or form you can. Cut them off, you know, rip them off, whatever. Just get rid of them. You can't have them on to do some of these things. It's just impossible. Um, again, number point number two was non-true bypass. It creates a warmer, fatter wah sound than true bypass. True bypass boiler pedals can get a bit shrill and they don't quite have the right tonality for Jimmy stuff. So um, that's that one. Number three was leaving it on full time. So for solos. <laughs> so stuff like that. Um, number four, uh, on for one note. And for noise making. I absolutely love that. It's so cool. <laughs> that's what I sound. That's that. That's that's my interpretive dance version of that sound. It's like dun 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 dun. <laughs> like that. Anyway. He's gone mad. Okay. Uh, yeah. Leaving it off one note or noise making just kind of before. So I like you know that kind of noise. Uh, number five. Dive bombs with open strings. Kind of like you know that kind of, that kind of thing where it's like. Um... <laughs> Which again, you hear on stuff like I Don't Live Today and Burning the Midnight Lamp and, and quite a lot of like, live guitar solos. Um, I've just thought of something else as well. No, that's not a wild technique. I can't talk to you about that right now. Sorry. Um, um, so yeah, dive bomb open strings. Uh, and then do it sliding dive bombs. Like I say, just jo uh, J Johnny, John. He's not talking about John Fashanti anymore, Dave. This is Jimi Hendrix. Um, 
uh, basically Jimmy simulating kind of bombs. Let's say that. Yeah, that incredible, incredible sound. Absolutely incredible sound. Scares me. It really is scary. It's a scary sound. Okay, the on-off trick, which again is very, very hard. <laughs> So uh, that one, that's probably, I'd say that's that's easily the hardest Jimmy Wah technique is the on and off trick. It's really, really cool. And Wah riffs, just stuff, stuff like, let's say, Burn and Midnight. Like <laughs> Where you basically, every time you play a note, you're just using the Wah of the pedal to, like I say, just emphasize that note. <laughs> you know, stupid way of playing it, but you, you, hopefully it kind of explains what I mean. Every note is emphasised by the wah. <laughs> Which would, Jimmy would do a lot in solos and riffs, you know. There's a lot of that kind of like wah, 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 kind of sound. <laughs> yeah, stuff like that. And uh, that's it. That is it. I, I literally can't think of anything else. Um, but I can't leave that technique out that I've just spoke about everybody. I think it's just it's cheating you and I don't, I, it feels like I'm cheating you, it's not fair. A technique that Jimmy would do is this. Hit the guitar, getting it making that noise, and then you flick his switch, uh, dive on the guitar, and then flick the switch, select the switch back, and let the tremolo arm come up. And as the tremolo arm got to a certain height, he would flick the switch back down, and then dive bomb the guitar. So. As the switch came up, release the dive bomb. And as the switch goes forward, push the dive bomb down. And it's just a really weird, weird, weird sound. And you can hear that on some version of Purple Haze and uh, mostly live performances. It's a very, very strange sound. Um, so yeah. Um, there you go. It's off my chest. I feel better for that. Actually. I, I hate keeping things from people. It's just not fair. So, um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video, everybody, on how to play a Jimi Hendrix. I wanted to teach these before the next song I'm going to teach. I'm not going to say what that is, but it's going to be very in-depth, and I'm going to do it in parts. I'm not going to do it in one video. I'm going to do it in parts, because there's a lot to learn. And I wanted to get these wah techniques in first, because they're kind of important to that song. Okay, so uh, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it's been informative. I hope these have kind of helped. I hope you kind of like, you know, anything that was a bit hazy, I hope it might have cleared it up. I hope you can kind of start incorporating some of these techniques into your own playing. They're great fun. They sound immense. I wish I'd use my other guitar. I'm not comfortable with this guitar at all. Silly Dave. But uh, I do hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you again for another video very, very, very soon. Q&A Wednesday, actually. Um, yes, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you again. Have a great morning, afternoon and a good evening. Goodbye now. <laughs>